Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is a West African tradition that before you address a group of people, that you ask an elder for permission to speak. And today I rise with the, with the permission of Ms. Hetty Keith, who is an elder in the 17th Assembly District. So, uh, SJR 102, Article 5. It's, uh, this is a display of power, and I get that. Those who follow certain traditions recognize the number five with the word power. And um, I just find it amazing how much of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle flex and puff their chests out on so many issues. And sh but somehow they are complete snowflakes when it comes to the issues of people who don't look like them. And they want their children to be snowflakes as well. However, I don't think that their children are as snowflakey as they are. Um, Quoting the representative from the fourth, you can't, he said yesterday, you can't know other people until you know yourself. Uh, I wish this applied to non-white folks in the state of Wisconsin, whether or not we're talking about uh, Native American history or black history. This is the third year that we refuse to recognize Black History Month in this body um, because it makes certain people uncomfortable. They want to remove the tradition of acknowledging black people who have contributed to the great history of Wisconsin. I don't know when Sidney Poteer became such a divisive name. Uh, maybe it's the confrontation that his character, Mr. Tibbs, had with Mr. Endicott in the movie In the Heat of the Night. We must refuse to acknowledge someone whose character defended himself against an assault on camera. Say their name is a popular phrase. That Remind the gentleman that the I'm, I'm question is on the point of order. I'm still on the point of order, Mr. Speaker. You if are I may continue. definitely not. So I'm still on the point of order. It. So say their name is, is a phrase that we must always speak to. When we talk about Giannis Adetokounmpo, Tory Tojo Johnson, Gab Taylor, and others who continue to make history and continue that great tradition of name calling uh, in the state of Wisconsin. We must continue the show of strength as is attempted in at SJR 102. Uh, we must continue the show of strength. We must continue this show of power that's being attempted by recognizing, recognizing the strength and power of black Wisconsinites and those in this body elected to represent them and exercise their degree of liberation. Happy Black History Month, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, it's the year 2022, which means the year 2030 is right around the corner. Uh, we cannot allow our planet to warm beyond two degrees Celsius. We must prevent climate change and achieve climate justice. Drought-like conditions this past summer, lack of snow this winter. I know some of you aren't cheering for that part. <laughs> um, to that effort, we need to get more internal combustion engines off the road and more electric vehicles on the road. I want to get on the road to that. I want to get on the road to, to that reality. But unfortunately, SB 573 and its companion AB 588 in its current form does not get us closer to this reality. So there's a conversation that we need to have about electricity. Is it a utility or is it a fuel? Folks, there are folks who want the Public Service Commission out of this business. And if it's a fuel, they don't have a purview over it. P permission to read from a printed document, Mr. Speaker? Without objection. Okay. From the bill it says specifically, this bill also prohibits a political subdivision from owning, operating, managing, leasing, or controlling a charging facility that is available to the public unless authorized by the governing body of the political subdivision and prohibits the Department of Transportation from authorizing the installation or operation of a charging facility that is available to the public or located at a wayside unless the department submits to the Joint Committee on Finance a request for authorization. So, the real question, the real conversation is that we want to have EV charging stations, but we don't want to compete with the government. 
Government can pay to build them, but they don't want them owning or operating them. I have a very good colleague of mine in Milwaukee County, who uh, Milwaukee County Supervisor Ryan Clancy, who wants to talk about having charging stations, more charging stations in Milwaukee County. However, what's in it for them if they can't operate them? Let's achieve climate justice, Mr. Speaker. Let's support a great environmental justice package the Democrats rolled out. We talked about on-bill financing that could help owners of properties do some of that great work to green their homes that they own, to reduce the energy costs for their renters. Let's talk about Climate Corps that gets young people involved in climate justice and united climate equity and jobs in the same overlapping dialogue and training the next generation of climate justice champions. Let's support the governor's proposed offers, Office of Environmental Justice. Folks can see the train coming, Mr. Speaker. They know that this renewable energy thing is a thing and they can make money off of it. We don't want anyone getting in the way of our pockets is really the conversation. Capitalism rears its ugly head again. Let's do right by the folks and put people over profits. I would love to see the day when my colleague, the representative from the 23rd, could thoroughly enjoy her electric vehicle trip to Madison. We need to build the infrastructure throughout the state to get more EVs on the road and more ICEs off the road. And let's make sure that if we're going to ask for billions of dollars from the federal government, that we won't then change our tune and say, well, they can't operate them and help people get access to charging. Let's do right by the people of the state of Wisconsin. 2030 is around the corner. Let's get together and do some good work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With that, we will. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, voting is not a privilege to be enjoyed by a select few, uh, but it's a right to be enjoyed by all. Um, in fall of 2016, I fell ill with Legionnaire's disease, and I spent two weeks in the intensive care unit. The representatives from the 10th and the 19th both visited me there. Um, the representative from the 19th talked a very long time as he does on this floor. <laughs> However, um, they visited me and I was ill. And I think that I was recovering that fall and voted absentee. Um, the, in the 2020 Milwaukee mayoral election, right at the beginning of our pandemic, many people were forced to vote in person even though they would have rather had alternative ways to vote. We wanted to vote in June, et cetera, but it was like, no, you're gonna vote now. So many people stood in line exposing themselves, literally risking their lives to vote. I was able to vote absentee. Um, my youngest niece, my sugar, turned 18 and voted for the first time in the Milwaukee mayoral election um, a couple of weeks ago. My mother, her grandmother, had a jar of jelly beans on, on, on the counter and some bubbles and told her, count these jelly beans in this jar and tell me how many bubbles I just blew before you can vote. Uh, because these are the tactics that they use in the South uh, to prevent people from, to in essence, prevent people from voting. They didn't say you can't vote, we're just gonna make you count jelly beans to vote. With, uh, there are so many ways they're looking to prevent people and punish people from assisting in this bill. It's kind of like the sequel uh, to a really, really, really bad film. You keep asking us why we keep bringing up all these other things because it's a series of bad things. Um, Spike Lee used to have a series of movies and he would put his tag, this is a Spike Lee joint to let you know that this is another one of my films. And that's what you're doing here from the same people who brought you gerrymandered maps so they could maintain power in perpetuity, we have this bill. From the same people who brought you voter ID in search of election fraud that didn't really exist, we have this bill. Let me be very clear. People who are watching this on Wisconsin Eye, unless you are gonna vote for a Republican member of the assembly, the Senate, 
a Republican candidate for governor, for U.S. Senate, for town board, for dog catcher, for poop scooper, whatever it might be, these people don't give a rodent's hind parts about your right to vote. They are doing this to maintain power in perpetuity. They don't care about your, unless you're gonna vote for them, they don't care about your rights to vote. If you are gonna vote for a Republican, then they're gonna do everything they can to make sure that they can get that ballot cast. The vote on this is so red, it's like the deepest burgundy rouge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, gentleman from the 17th, two minutes on tabling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I was a, uh, a, a real fan of science. And we talked about expand and contract. And we need to expand the vote. And what this does is expands the vote. Because uh, I remember when I was 18, I turned 18, and I had to register for select services. And my mom was like, you're 18 now, you got to register to vote. It, wouldn't it have been great if I could, you know, just register to vote? on the spot, that'd have been great. We wanna expand the electorate. That makes sure everybody is involved and everybody is registered to vote right, out, right in the outset. However, I can see why my colleagues don't want to expand the vote. Because if you, if you contract the vote, then that many more people will not be able to vote for your opposition. And all, of, all this is a part of that sequel that I spoke about earlier to make it harder for people who don't support the ever-increasing divisive, insidious agenda that the other side of the aisle continues to purport. And so I want to make sure that we are expanding the vote and not contracting the vote. More people voting in the state of Wisconsin Every eligible 18-year-old to vote in the state of Wisconsin is more beneficial for our democracy and more beneficial for our system and more beneficial for the future of the state of Wisconsin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Lady from the 90th, two minutes on tabling. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll make this very simple. If you actually believe, as you have said today, that your members have said that they believe that we should encourage people to vote and that voting is central to our democracy, then we should simply have a system 